All right, haven't done one of these in a while, so let's talk about the Type 31E frigate built by or the new frigate that the Royal Navy wants to build. So first of all, what is the Type 31E frigate? Because that's just a bunch of numbers and letters. Well, the Type 31E frigate is the new sort of light frigate that the Royal Navy wants to build to protect UK waters and UK interests overseas. It's also known as the General Purpose Frigate, because they haven't come up with a cool name yet, like Defender or whatever. Um... Let's talk about why, first of all, this frigate is a thing. If you know a bit about the Royal Navy or general naval stuff, you know that the Royal Navy currently is looking to replace its current fleet of Type 23 frigates with a fleet of Type 26 frigates, which are very big, heavy frigates that can perform both uh, anti-submarine missions and general purpose missions, like air defense, land strike, uh, counter-terrorism, whatnot. The problem is that the Type 26 frigate, like most big projects today, is very fucking expensive. The program to this date has cost, uh, or sorry, in 2016, cost about eight billion pounds, with each ship expected to cost somewhere upwards of one billion each, which is close to what we paid for uh, all of the Type 26, uh, Type 45 destroyers. So each Type 45 destroyer cost one billion as well. The Type 26 frigate is very, very well equipped, and I really do mean very well. It's got a lot of weapons. It's got a lot of. It's got a lot of capability, and it's going to be an excellent ship. That can be proven by the fact that Australia purchased 9, and Canada purchased 15 on top of the ones that Royal Navy's purchased. So, if we've got such good ships, why do we need the Type 31E? Well, simply put, there's not enough money, and there makes it makes no sense to invest so much money, or we can't really effectively invest so much money to replace 13 Type 23 frigates that we have in service now, or as someone even like to see, the 16 that we used to have. So, the Type 31E was basically brought around because there's not enough money. One of the reasons, or one of the more tactical reasons why it's been said to be brought around is for another reason which actually makes a lot of sense. When you're deploying, current, most naval operations today aren't going into combat, aren't lobbing missiles at places unless you're America, really. No, not even America does that. When you're going into combat, you're not really launching missiles at anything, you're not really hunting submarines anymore, you're not really looking to throw shells at each other. Most naval operations today are counter-terrorism, maybe, just maybe amphibious support if you're actually in a war and and otherwise picking up narcotics and migrants. That's what we're facing today and that's what the Royal Navy faces a lot. You can see because the Type 41, 40, sorry, the Type 45 destroyers yeah, that are deployed in the Mediterranean in that area are just picking up drugs left, right and centre. That's all they're doing. We're using ships that cost one billion a pound or a piece to pick up drugs. What's the use of that? Because I can't see one. It makes very little sense to send one billion pounds of equipment plus all the men and women on board that ship and the helicopter and whatnot to do that purpose. Really all you need to do that purpose is a ship with a gun for intimidation and occasional fire support, some smaller guns to actually kill the boats, some Royal Marines and maybe a helicopter. And that is the idea behind the Type 31 ship. The Type 31 or the Type 1 frigate is supposed to be put overseas somewhere, or even at home, but to take on the more menial small jobs to free up the high quality ships to protect the carriers and do more important work, such as protecting our coastline from potential Russian ships, uh, even protecting, you know, even performing possible naval operations that are actually, you know, combat instead of picking up pirates. So, what is the Type 31 equipped with? Well, what's being expected right now is a, a, a four and a half inch gun on the front, some common anti-air missile system, so that's the C-Scepter missile system that's on the Type 31, Type 23 frigate as well, and it's going to be on the Type 31, uh, a C-Wiz system, so probably a phalanx C-Wiz, and some harpoon or whatever future ASW missile is going to be. It's also probably going to be able to carry one helicopter, or they're expecting it to carry one helicopter, and carry about 75 marines for uh, you know, amphibious operations if need be. The ships are supposed to displace about 2,500 to 4,500 tons, and there's going to be about between 5 to 10 vessels produced. Now the key thing about these vessels is their price. Each vessel is supposed to cost only £250 million pounds per ship. This is where the problem comes in. A lot of people are saying that the Royal Navy is asking for too much in for paying, or is asking for too much for too little. The £250, pounds are not, or for, sorry, £250 million pounds are not going to cover the, you know, the cost of the weapons and the ship and all of that. Especially with, you know, prices of everything going up in recent years. I mean, we saw what, 
as, as I said, eight one billion roughly upwards for it for one Type Twenty Six ship. So people have been wondering, is that enough? Well, simply put, maybe. A lot of there's been three key competitors initially. BAE have partnered with Camelon Laird to produce the Leander class frigate, which is based off a Karif class corvette, which in turn is again based off the BAE uh, River class offshore patrol vessel, which is currently serviced with the Royal Navy. Now Babcock have partnered with Fales or Fales, I think it's the French pronunciation, to produce the Arrowhead 140, which is based off the Danish Ivor Huitfeld. I think I'm probably butchering that, but I don't know. Class frigate, uh, which is the well, I think the mainstay frigate of the Danish Navy, and then Atlas Electronic UK, and have partners with TKMS to essentially propose a Miko A two hundred class frigate, which is a very common frigate in Europe, having a lot, and I really do mean a lot of countries purchasing it. I know uh, Greece and Turkey have got ships built off it, and a lot of other nations have as well. So, what are the differences? Uh, firstly. It's mainly the displacement. Arrowhead 140 is the biggest by far, weighing at around 5,700 uh, tons. Leander is between 2,600 and 3,700 tons, depending on how well you equip it. And the Miko is 3,700 tons. My personal favorite right now is Arrowhead 140, but let me tell you why. Number one, in my opinion, it is not the best looking ship, but it has the best capability. It has great, very good accommodation. Uh, it's got the best weapon systems. It's got best speed of all of them. And it is, it's just a nice ship. It's a well thought out ship that is already in service of a country. And would also, one thing that's quite important to me, would be produced somewhere that breaks BAE systems monopoly on the Royal Navy, which is a whole other subject. But yeah, it would break their monopoly. But let's talk about the key thing on essentially all of the ships which is the ability to have an interchangeable module in the ship. And what I mean by that is they want a facility or a pit, bit of a ship that they can put a bunch of different stuff into. By that I mean they can put in small boats, they can put in containers, they can put in specialist mission equipment uh, like anti-mine equipment, they can even put in additional helicopters, they can put in storage for prisoners or marines or whatnot. They want space to carry additional stuff so that they can adjust depending on the mission without having to have 20 different ships for different objectives. So that's what the key is around this ship. They've also put that in the Type 26 frigate, obviously, but this, that's sort of the key thing for all of these ships together. They need to be modular. And that term modular, you'll probably hear a bunch if you're looking at military stuff today. Modular this, modular that. But it's not actually a bad idea. Instead of trying to cram everything into one ship, you're leaving space for us to switch out pieces which we can then cram into that ship. So instead of having a, a command of Royal Marines amphibious ship that also provides us with minesweeping capability, that also provides us with anti-submarine capability, that provides with AA capability, you could alternate that out. So you can have that Royal Marines factor in it if you want to have, do maybe amphibious operations or special operations. You could have more helicopters in there if you want to do helicopter training, or you're going somewhere where you need to operate a lot of helicopters. Or you could even add additional defensive equipment. There is a possibility, I've read, of using that modular bay to put in more uh, missiles. So all of that's nice and dandy, but what's actually happened with the project? Well, not a lot's been said. At the end of 2018, start of 2019, the project was actually put on hold for a while. It is believed because it was due to lack of money. Or people, you know, the government actually realizing we can't get enough money for a good ship, or the price we've given won't pay for a good ship. But reportedly, it's running again. And it was just t they needed time to sort out some of the proposals. Um, I don't know what's actually going on. We don't, we haven't heard anything new on the Type Thirty One frigate as of recording this video. I really hope that the Royal Navy chooses to go for the Arrowhead One Forty design. Uh, it just is the best. Uh, Leander looks the best, but I want the 40. It's overall just the better ship. Um, yeah, I hope this video has been insightful to somewhat, and I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.